Hello and welcome to ATW, a.k.a. After the Whistle. I just came up with that abbreviation just now. I am freestyling. I am your host, Brian Dorrington. I'm here with Mukala Kabungo. I'm excited once again. It's, yeah. Well, first, let's show these people our new technological advancement that we have. Yeah, Sh we kind of went a little. Here. We was, we was rambling too long uh, last week. Last week, so we have to to keep on track. I got this FBI EFT. So, I think it's more of a Secret Service. Secret ERP's. Service. So you know. Pedro hooked us up. Yeah, Pedro. Last time he cut, he cut us off last time. So, <laughs> so we need a way to communicate. Uh, high tech here at LCTV. If you haven't been here, come on down. We got a new projector too. We got a new projector. We're gonna start. with a lot of great stuff going on here. We won't get into that. Let's get into some of the great stuff that the Red Sox did. Yeah. Well, or one of the great well, things. What do you What do you think about it? Hey, what, JD you Martinez. A, you got a guy who can hit the ball. That's and what we in needed. baseball, you always need somebody who can hit those home runs. So mm -hmm. I, this was a good pickup for them, a solid picked up pickup. I thought they should have got another pitch, a pitcher, you know, because I think a lot of issues. They get a pretty deep bullpen. They, yeah, but I think a lot of people had issues with their pitching. There was a lot of complaints about their pitching last season. So I don't know, maybe somebody they could have picked somebody up just you know insurance purposes or some kid, just a big name pitcher if they could or a decent pitcher. But I like this move, five years. A lot of money for the JD It's Martinez. a lot of money, but it's it's a front-loaded contract yeah. too, uh, and, and there are a lot of outs. This this is a very very uh, what's the word legalese contract. Yeah, there's a lot of opt-outs for both parties. I think JD Martinez can opt out within the first two years. Yeah, after after the two. Yeah, after and two then years, and then he has this this injury. It's the Liz Liz Frank um, in his foot. Yeah, and if that injury keeps him out a certain number of games, mm -hmm. then the Red Sox have an opt-out clause. Mm -hmm. It took so long for J.D. Martinez to make his way to Boston. And now after hearing, of course I haven't read the contract, yeah. but about hearing what's in it, it just seems so tedious what they're doing these days. And I get it, both parties want to protect themselves, yeah. but this comes down to, I, I mean, just playing a certain amount of games, how mm -hmm. many at-bats you're going to get, and it's just, it's a lot of incentive-based. Yeah. He's going to get paid a lot of money, and he's an older guy. I think that, he's I 30. think this is a... Yeah, he's 30. Yeah, yeah, so I think 35 at the, you know, by the end of his contract. And he's a good hitter. I think he had 40, 45 home 45 runs last year. 45 home runs, that's it. What? With Arizona and Detroit. Yeah, with Arizona and Detroit. So he's not just uh, a home run hitter, though, either. Yeah. Because he's been, uh, if you average his last four years, he's still hitting over, batting over 300. Yeah. So he's a, he's a legit player. I know and he brings runs in. 104 RBIs last year. So this guy, he, he's productive on the field. Yeah. Uh, I, I know a lot of people were didn't like it, at least on Boston Sports Radio. I don't know why. Boston, they just, Sports, they, Boston Radio. Sports Radio. They just critique it all <laughs> yeah. the time. Unfortunately, I have a long commute, so that's what I have to listen when, to. When, when are they ever positive about us signing? N never. <laughs> yeah. Never. So, well, speaking of Boston media and Red Sox players, yeah. Boston media's favorite Red Sox player to talk about, David Price. David Price. Uh, <laughs> what's, David, what's up with David Price? This I don't year? know. He needs to. He needs to get his act together. Has he won a playoff game yet? I don't think. Uh, me. I, that's been the big thing about him. He'll have a great regular season, and then playoff comes, he can't get it done for them. Uh, but he didn't even have that great of a regular season last year. Yeah, last year he was six. He had a 6-3 record, 76 strikeouts, ERA of 3.38. I mean, 3 point. I think anything above a 3 is a little high for yeah. earned runs. So, yeah, last year was uh, was not one of his best. But he, he, he has to step up his game this year a lot because – there might be there might be rumors of getting him out of here if he doesn't he doesn't play to <laughs> yeah I mean, to the contract they signed him he's for. only in three years of his seven year deal mm -hmm. seven year two hundred and some odd million two hundred and seventeen million it, it's, he got paid a lot of money yeah and he's been a big distraction outside of the locker room I mean mm -hmm. the Dennis Eckersley thing killed him yeah and he's just trolling the fans he trolls the the media he doesn't i don't think he wants to be in boston mm -hmm. i think he likes his teammates in boston he doesn't like the media he doesn't like any scrutiny this guy he's he's really just trolling everybody and it's not and it's not helping him because he's yeah. going to he's going to be a distraction if he yeah. goes goes keeps going this way but he's really not going to win back the boston media unless nope. he has a Cy young type year <laughs> Which is not happening. And you know the, the the what the saying is: if you want to have a battle with the media, you're never gonna, you're never going to win that battle because the media always 
they always come out on top of those battles, especially if you have a poor season, then they're really going to crank up the criticism on you. So I, I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know why he didn't know this about Boston media. This isn't know, Tampa right? Bay. This isn't Tampa no. Bay where, you know, you got a bunch of retired people over there. They don't really care much about baseball. So you're coming into a big market. Of course you need to expect this. This is what happens when you come to the Northeast. Baseball here is pretty big. and <laughs> yeah, You, you want to make friends with the media, too, because the media really does uh, alter the perception of a lot of the fans who are going to watch this, too. Definitely. If he wants to not get booed. Uh, and that was actually one of the things he said to J.D. Martinez, supposedly, if you come to Boston, you're going to get booed. Like, just having those stories yeah. leak, it's like, you know, you, don't you want the fans to I'd like you? I'd boo you, too, if you suck. I'd boo you, too, exactly. And so the, you're getting paid $217 million a year. Yeah. You know, you were, this, you were supposed to be one of the best pitchers in the league, top 20 pitchers. Can't so. even get the team, can't even win a playoff game. The team hasn't, they won the AL East two back-to-back -back seasons, I believe, and or they won it last year. I'm not sure if they won it the year before, but they can't. Eat, they can't win a playoff game, playoff round. So ever since that World Series they run, they won. It's. I mean, they have. They haven't produced another. You know, another stellar playoff run. They have. The following year after they won that World Series, they had a terrible year, and then it, it's just been. It hasn't been great for them. But what, the expectations this year are higher. New coach, yeah. Uh, a players, a players' coach, former player, mm -hmm. younger. You know, will bring some uh, vivaciousness to yeah. this team. Hopefully, get them motivated. So, yeah. there's a lot of good things going on with the Red Sox. And they need a lot of people to you know have a stellar seasons. I mean, Ramirez had 23 home runs last year. Mitch Moreland had 22. Andrew Bennett. Ben and Tendi had ben 20, and, 20 yeah. and then the next is 17 and, t and 10 by Jackie Bradley Jr. and Xander Bogart. So they're gonna need, they're gonna need some of those players to crank up the home runs, crank up the RBI. So they, they need a, they need a stellar season, especially with the team, you know, the Evil Empire did this off season. Oh, they're loading up. They're they loading got up. They got their boy Gene Carlos Stanton. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about deal. the AL East for a second. The, the Yankees, they're really. That, this team looks like they're gonna, <laughs> they, they might be a World Series team. Well, it's it's down to two teams really. Yeah, and the East is what it seems it's, like. It's gonna be Red Sox and Yankees. I mean, Tampa Bay, poop, Toronto. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Toronto, they're, they're Toronto. You don't like Canadian um, teams yeah, in general. Yeah, we know this. They're it's Canadians. Baseball, basketball. <laughs> it's, you just don't it, like them. Yeah, if it ain't hockey, then you just don't take them seriously. Yeah, if okay, there's any other sports. Sure. And then Baltimore. I mean, when has Baltimore ever been like a, a serious threat to win anything? Yeah, it, it was. A, it, there was an arms race on the off season. They each got the guy that they wanted. Yeah. The hitter that they wanted. The hitters that they need. Yeah. I think the uh, the Stanton and Judge. This. I mean that <laughs> when you get to those in the lineup when you're a pitcher that's gonna be that's gonna be scary because they're two players who each had 50 home runs last season. So I do think we have a better bullpen. I think I mean I think yeah, we have the they... best pitcher in the league at least the top three mm -hmm. in in sale. So I, I think th th there are gonna be some fun yeah. games to watch. That's one thing I was uh, I was looking at with the Yankees was their pitching. It's the only name I could think of I could see that's you know a threat would be Cece. Yeah. And, and the, all the other ones, I just I look at them and I'm just like, eh, I don't think these guys are really going to be scaring opponents. But the I Red mean, Sox have a better bullpen. Yeah, that's for sure. The yeah, so the the Red Sox they get they get the edge in pitching, but the Yankees and with the hitting, it's you know, woo. You know, I'd, I'd love to get uh, Pedro in the back. I'd love to get him to come on and talk about baseball because it's the love of his life. <laughs> Fans, please uh, call in, tweet, Facebook, say, Pedro, we want you to talk about baseball. Get out of the back and direct some. Let's get this guy on TV, okay? Get Pedro He's on good. camera. He's very knowledgeable. Get Pedro on camera. Get Pedro on camera. Pedro in the back. I like that new thing for the guy. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, I mean, that's all we got for AL East and Okay, yeah, so I so mean, let's so let's talk about uh, another thing right now. Another great Boston sports team. Things are looking great for Boston sports. The Bruins. The Bruins. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about this uh, Rick Nash deal? Ah, uh, I like it. I like it. I of course think. you like it. It's a great <laughs> deal. It, it it was definitely a good deal. They they didn't give up much for it. I mean nothing. They, hey, you're gonna need somebody like that for the playoff run. He's an experienced player. 
You know, so it just adds more depth to their lineup. What, do you, what did you make of the trade? Well, I thought it was great. I, it, the best pickup, um, he's already elevated Krejci's game. They have the 8-4 win mm -hmm. over, the Penguin, over the Penguins. Krejci had a hat trick in that game. Nash put in another goal. They just looked, it was a totally different line. Krejci's playing his best mm -hmm. hockey when, he, when he's playing with one or two power forwards. I mean, you look when he was uh, line mates with Aginla, mm -hmm. Lucic, Horton. Those are big, tough, physical guys that can open things up for Krejci, who's yeah. a skill guy. And he's got DeBrusque on the other side, who's, who's also, you know, he's not a big guy, but mm -hmm. he's a skilled guy too. So that line uh, seems to be firing off right off the bat they seem to be clicking and they're only going to get better yeah. Nash is probably the best guy at this time in his career that Krejci's ever played with as yeah. a line mate so expect big things from both of those guys and you know my favorite guy on the, on the Brewers is Tuca Tuca well Tuka. he's he's up he's the one of the he's gonna in playoff hockey it comes down That's to a, a lot of goaltending yeah and Tuca he's He's shown the belly. He can he can give you a lot of saves. He can he protects that goal. Vesna winning candidate. Uh, Vesna winning um, goalie. He can play great, but then he also has his slumps too. Yeah, well, we just hope the slumps don't happen during the postseason. You know, because oh god, yeah. As long as it happens during the, the regular season, it's fine. But when you start making that playoff run, that's when we'll, I'm hoping he plays his best his best hockey. And by, by the looks of the way he's been, the, some of the games I've watched, you know, I don't watch hockey that much, but some of the games I've watched, he's, done, he's had some amazing saves. So I think this, this Brewers team, do you think they could beat the, the, the Tampa Bay Lightning? I think that it's down to two teams in the East. I think it's kind of becoming sort of how basketball is becoming where there's a limited amount of contenders. Mm -hmm. Playoff hockey is always a little bit more unpredictable mm -hmm. than other sports. Yeah. There's always tons of sayings, you know, the puck, the, how, however the puck bounces. Yeah. But I think there are two elite teams, and Tampa Bay got much better at the deadline mm -hmm. by acquiring Ryan McDonough. Your guy. Nash's, yep, yep, Nash's old teammate in New York. They mm -hmm. know each other very well. So I, I think that if these two teams don't make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, then it's going to be a disappointment for those two teams. Because, and, you know, let's, let's not, you know, debate it. Tampa Bay's got some really good talent on yeah. offense. I mean, they got yeah. uh, Stamkos and Kucherov, mm -hmm. and they got a lot of great players. But we picked up some good depth players yeah. as well that have already made an impact. We got Gianta, fresh off the Olympics. Okay. We got Tommy Wingles, mm -hmm. and then we got Nick Holden. And in their first uh, games as Bruins, Gianta and Holden each had an assist. I think Gianta had two assists, okay. actually, yeah. And Wingles had to step up uh, and play on the third line mm -hmm. because of... Now, here's where things get worrisome. Patrice Bergeron is out. It's a fractured foot. It is hockey. You can play with a fractured foot. He's going to be out for at least the foreseeable uh, so, next two weeks. Well, They're yeah. going to reevaluate at that point. If, if Bergeron is, is healthy and the rest of the team's healthy... We should make it to at least the Eastern Conference Finals. We're definitely staying a uh, cup contender. Without Bergeron, I don't know. Yeah, I think if, yeah, fractured foot, I think if he's not 100%, I mean, their chances are... Oh, he'll play at 80%. Yeah, he'll play it's at 80%. Easy with, it's easy, because he got yourself in a, in a boot. I'm not going to say easy, but yeah. it's the easiest sport to Maybe play with a Maybe it's easy for them, because, you know, they're yeah. professionals. Oh, they're tough guys, Because yeah, I'll be, I'll be some court. Oh, me too. I'll be Come crying. Put some, they'll just take a couple yeah. cortisone shots, and they'll be all right. All right. So, that's a... It's Pedro that's telling all, you we got to move all, on. Yeah, that's all the NHL talk we have until, you know, they start making the, the Stanley Cup uh, playoff run, which, which should be starting next month. Around next yeah. month. So, our You're, favorite topic. Oh, your favorite NFL. topic. NFL. Yo, and your it's favorite like, player. It's like we can't escape the NFL. We try to take a break from the NFL, but then, boom, boom. some news always, exp always happens. So, Blake Bortles, your guy. <laughs> My guy. That's your I don't guy. Think he's anybody's guy. That's your guy. Although now Jacksonville's stuck with him for at least two, <laughs> probably three years. They gave him a three year extension, 54 million, 26.5 million guaranteed. Mm hmm. This, that was my reaction. I, I made that face. You, you like, were a little speechless. I was like, uh, okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, it, it feels like they, you know, they. I mean, I guess they have faith in him so for 
if they're gonna sign, if they're gonna give him that extension, I thought they were just gonna, I thought they would look at other options because of what we saw in the AFC Championship game and their lack of confidence in him to get the ball down the field. Because mm-hmm. if you watched it, it was all, you know, bang, 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 bang. And then when the opportunities come for him to, you know, lead a drive to kind of extend their lead, they they took a knee. That that'll forever be in everybody's memory. So, mm-hmm. I mean. Okay, I see. If you go, if you want to give him the money, okay. Judging off his 2017 season, he had 3,687 yards passing, which ranked 11th in the league. 21 passing touchdowns, 13 interceptions, fewest of his career. He he had a career high of 18 interceptions two years in 2015. So decent numbers, but now that he has this extension, you have to get that ball down the field. You have to be. You have to work on. He has to work on his accuracy because he has the weapons, he has the receivers, and he, you know, he just has to. He has to be a dog, pretty much. He has to be a dog. So I did some more research on this, and the reason that Blake Bortles got a contract extension was because there was a fifth-year option on the table, mm-hmm. and it was uh, an injury option. It would have. It's because he hurt his wrist at one point. And right. if he would have played this year for the Jacksonville, they would have owed him $19 million this season. Ugh. Instead, they restructured him, gave him a three-year deal. So now only $26 million is guaranteed. Okay. And you get the guy for an extra year. So I think that this was a money move. Mm-hmm. This is not a long-term commitment to Blake Bortles. This is saying... We'll keep you around for this year and probably the next year. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they view him as the guy for the future. I think this was a money move. They looked at the market and they said, we can't just cut Bortles. We can't go in on thinking we're going to get Foles or Cousins because that's just not the route they're going to go. And they probably didn't have – sorry to cut you off, but I don't think they had – I don't think they had faith – in my opinion, I don't think they had faith in the other quarterbacks that are in the free free agency. Right, there aren't many there. Yeah, so – yeah. So they went with the safe guy, the guy who knows the system. He yeah. did get you to the AFC uh, championship game yeah. last year. I do it, it, I, the research I did, and this wasn't, of course, original research, <laughs> but I read more articles on yeah. it, and that does seem to make sense. They didn't want to pick up the f- the fifth year option for 19 million mm-hmm. when you can pay him 23 million guaranteed and get him for three years. Okay, definitely. And my thing with Blake Bortles, if he could put up the season he had in 2015. With the talent he has around him, that year he threw for 4,428 yards, 35 touchdowns, and 18 interceptions. If he could repeat that season with just the cut down of the interceptions, I think this team can make that next step because they definitely have the weapons on both sides. They got talent everywhere. Of, they have the talent on both sides of the too. ball. So it's all about the quarterback. If he steps his game up, they'll they'll be able to you know make that make that uh, leap to probably be in the – maybe go to the Super Bowl next year. Mm-hmm. And also, in shocking news, the Kansas City Chiefs decided to wow. trade their best defensive player. For nothing. Nothing. For very for nothing. very little. I'm not going to say nothing for very little. Fourth round picks, second round picks. And that, they get a sixth, sixth round in return. Yeah. And the second round pick isn't even this year. It's in next year's yeah, draft. So the fourth I, round yeah, is this year. That, that was an interesting move, but I heard r- rumors were saying that he had – he was a locker room issue – that's what it is, yeah. Uh, yeah, he, Andy Reid disciplined him this season. I think he benched him for one game for... He was suspended for, for Suspended, yeah, he was suspended for one game. And they're saying, if you know Andy Reid, he rarely does that unless you're really a problem. Well, well, a la T.O. Yeah, he well, deactivated him for a season. So. Well, what happened was he took the flag, ref's flag, and threw it in the stands and then left the game without being ejected, went into the locker room and then didn't come back. <laughs> He was he was a problem player in one thing. Yeah, it's but you know he's a problem player off the field, but he's 25. He's in his prime. He's yeah. a two-time Pro Bowler. He's a top five cornerback in a position where there's not many great cornerbacks now that you would consider a number one guy. There, there's very few. Yeah, and he's he had 19 interceptions in his yeah. first four years that's, in the I think league. That's, that's the, the league. most. That's the that's most. That's the most. Yeah, that's yeah. the most. More than Deion Sanders, more than any other. The the Rams, um, if they can keep him under control, they yeah. they are going to be dangerous on defense. They, they have already a, were dangerous on defense. Yep, yeah. and they have a defensive front, a defensive line that gets the quarterback. They don't blitz. Yeah. So this. Now, I mean, things is things is a interesting times in the NFL. So I think that was a, I mean, 
We're shocked by the move, but it was a good pickup for the Rams. Good for them. Good pickup for the Rams. Mm -hmm. What I'm also shocked with is there's rumors that it's actually pretty much confirmed now that they contacted every single team in the league to get rid of Peters. Oh. Only two teams were really in on it. It really gave serious offers, and that was the 49ers and the Rams. Everybody else passed on him. So apparently his mm -hmm. reputation goes beyond just what is being reported, is, yeah. is my assumption, yeah. that there are other stories floating around yeah. the league that, that this team. guy's a risk. Yeah, that team's in a but, he's, but he might be in a good place. He's got a young head coach, maybe something that can relate to him, and then he's got Wade Phillips as his defensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. So he might be in a place where they can turn him around. And Who he's knows? from California, so okay. that's, that's good. Going Close home. to home. Yeah, he's from the Bay Area, but, you know, L.A. Close enough. Uh, so we got other news up. Uh, NFL versus Jerry Jones. The Oof. this one, I think the NFL is seeking to re, re, Jerry Jones to reimburse them two million dollars. I, I think this is this all comes from the whole fighting the Ezekiel Elliott suspension. And th there's a rule in the NFL where it says uh, it says uh, NFL Constitution states any any owner who participates in bringing litigation against owners must reimburse them. So, for the legal fees. Yeah, yeah, so for the legal fees. So Jones and Jones also threatened to sue the commissioner. <laughs> see, see, but here, see, but here is the difference. I don't think he ever actually brought litigation against the NFL. I think he threatened to bring litigation, mm -hmm. which caused the NFL to get attorneys as well. Yeah, I think he's going to win this appeal. There's an appeal set for next week at some mm -hmm. point. But I think he's going to win the p appeal because. He never actually initiated litigation. There was never any court battles. I don't know what was sent as far as paperwork yeah. or whatnot. But I, I think that he's going to win. And this is really Jerry. It looks like Jerry Jones versus Roger Goodell. Mm -hmm. This is really Jerry Jones versus all the NFL owners, though, yeah, because, because that's because who they, he has to reimburse. Yeah. You know, he, when you sue the league, you're suing you're suing the owners. The mm -hmm. owners are the ones who obviously yeah, own the they league. Pay Goodell's salary. They and, pay Goodell's salary. They yeah. employ Goodell. So while it's as much as Jerry Jones versus the commissioner, it's also Jerry Jones against the other commissioners. And I, I mean against the other owners. And I'm sure that there are a lot of owners who feel the same way that Jerry Jones does. I know uh, that there's got to be some that don't like Goodell. Yeah. But you don't want to speak out of line because Goodell, as you can see, yeah, he'll, 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 go, he'll go after, go this after is you. Just, this is pretty hilarious, too, because... Remember when the whole Deflate Gate was happening? And, oh yes. And all these owners were backing up Commissioner Goodell. They were on his side. They say they fully support him 100%. He's he's doing a great thing. And now, and now we got this happening. So it's just like, well, look at here. What mm -hmm. happened? Hypocrisy. You know, yeah. it's just what it is. They're yeah. all hypocrites. Yeah. So um, this is this is gonna be interesting. It seems like the NF. It seems like owners and good. You can see this has been like brewing for a while. Mm -hmm. Like the owners versus Goodell. So now it's just. Ever since Spygate, it's just been you know, a free for all or Deflate Gate, whatever yeah. you want to call it. It's just been you know. And now, but they just signed him to a long-term contract, yeah. so they're stuck with him. Yeah, they're and stuck they're giving with him a heck of a lot of money. Yeah. Well, they tried to get Adam Silver. Yeah. He didn't want it. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame him, but. Well, that's 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 them for making that quick decision to give yeah, them that extension. Exactly. So, we'll see what what plays out from here. So, we got to take a break. What? Well, and we're gonna go to plus one. Yeah, with plus John Hoffman. One with John Hoffman. We got is state it's tournaments, to basketball state tournaments, hockey, a lot of things. Looking forward to the spring sports. So, after this break, you'll have a plus one with the legendary John Hoffman. I want a place I can enjoy every day. Where my son can play outside. That inspires me. Some places have the power to move us. And even transform us. This is the power of place. The power of parks and open spaces to transform whole communities by connecting us to nature, to each other, and to ourselves. This is the work of the Trust for Public Land. At a time when many of us are spending more time online than outdoors, we're putting nature within reach of every person in America. Help us create the power of place. 
and healthier, happier communities nationwide. Welcome to our weekly Plus One interview with the legendary John Hoffman. <laughs> well, he's going to talk to us about state tournament time. We got the Lynn Jets advancing. We got Lynn English Bulldogs, St. Mary's advancing in the state tournament basketball game. So we're going to talk about state tournaments right now. What's going on, John? Well, we started out with uh, nine teams uh, in uh, qualifying for the state tournament. Mm -hmm. Seven of them are still alive. Two of them, St. Mary's girls and classical girls, haven't played a game yet. They're going to, St. Mary's girls, as we speak now, the, uh, on Friday, uh, their game was canceled. They're going to have to make it up at some other time with Fenwick. Their third meeting with Fenwick. It's like, it's like I always call it Thanksgiving mm -hmm. in February yeah. or, or March because they're, they're Thanksgiving rivals in football. Mm -hmm. uh, English got off to a slow start against Peabody, and Peabody played them very tough. Thad Broughton all-time leading scorer of over 2,000 points for St. Mary's, mm -hmm. the coach of Peabody. Okay. Uh, did a really nice job, and they took English to the wire. Okay. And English finally pulled it out. Their athleticism showed at the end. And they're going to be playing Lowell they'll this They'll play Sunday. Lowell at Lowell on Sunday. Okay. Um, the Jets had to come from behind hockey. They fell behind 2 nothing. They fell behind 3-2. They fell behind 4-3. to three. Mm -hmm. They scored. They kept scoring. And, uh, they wound up winning the game 5-4 to four for the third time against Latin Academy this year. Okay. They move on. They, they play Shawshin, I think, uh, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, St. Mary's boys last night, uh, they got off to a slow start. 9-8, to eight, they were down at the end of one period, but they picked it up. Echeverria had another big game. He had like 13 points he, in the fourth he's period. Stellar, wasn't he named well, the player of the year in the conference? I'm not sure yet. Yeah. It hasn't come out yet, I don't think. Yeah. But he got 24 points. 13 in the, in the fourth period, and they wound up winning it, going away 16 points. Stevie Patrick for Lynn Tech did a terrific job with his team. Last year, they came in into the tournament through the back door. Mm -hmm. They had a losing record, but they finished second, and they, had, they were able to sneak in the tournament, and they got murdered by Newburyport. This year, they went in the front door. They, they won the, uh, the Commonwealth Conference small. They had a very good year. They went in, they played Newburyport at Newburyport, they were leading with two minutes to go, and they wound up losing by four. Uh, they made a shot selection the last couple of minutes was not the best. They mm -hmm. turned the ball over, and they wound up losing by four. St. Mary's girls had a tough time against Peabody. They scored two goals in the third period against former player and assistant coach at St. Mary, Coach Roach, Roach uh, does a, did a, is doing and has done a great job with the Peabody girls team. Mm -hmm. So tournament time is always fun. Yeah. Uh, classical lost. They were leading at halftime and wound up losing top second half. Seed. They wound up losing the low. So their that, season is over. That has and to be a disappointing season for them with the expectations that they had coming in. Yeah, well, they started the season 6-0. Mm -hmm. And they were before the season, they were ranked number three in the state. And they wound up having some difficulties, some problems, and uh, off and on. And they wound up uh, making the tournament, but they get knocked out in their first year. Yeah, that, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was uh, I, I was thinking that team was gonna you know make another stellar run. Everybody like they did, did last year, but I mean sometimes you know you can't carry yeah. over from the past season. So you talk about Echeverria, uh, he's I think I think it's at 58 points away from a thousand points, mm -hmm. and he'll get it easily because he's only a junior. But he could get it this year if they keep winning, mm -hmm. and they're the class of that Division Three. I don't know if anybody in the North mm -hmm. is going to beat him. Yeah, uh, I think they're probably going to play. The winner of Bedford Whittier, I think, would probably be Bedford. Mm -hmm. um, and those two teams play tonight. No, they're going to play. play they play later. Uh, oh, Bedford and Whittier play yeah, tonight. Yeah, Bedford Whittier. Uh, and then the winner of that will play St. Mary's, maybe as as late as Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Uh, giving time off for especially with team with games being uh, canceled. If they cancel mm -hmm. that game tonight, then they certainly won't play over the weekend because they'll have to play it over the weekend, you know, Bedford and Whittier. Yeah. But uh, the teams have been, you know, uh, the first year coaches, yeah. Jasper Grasser, Antonio Anderson, yeah. Stevie Patrick's only in his second year. Second. They did a great job. Yeah. Uh, they really did a, mm -hmm. an outstanding job. Mark Lee, again, he lost in a shootout, uh, not in a shootout, but he lost in the play-in game for the Super 8. I, I, read, I was reading about that. Uh, they, this, they, that was on Monday, correct? Uh, they actually outplayed St. John's and Shrewsbury. They, they outshot him. And as usual, 
uh, you get into a, into the hockey tournament in a one game shootout. The goalie makes all the difference. The kid's playing for St. John's at Shrewsbury was outstanding. Mm -hmm. I mean, he stopped. He didn't. He was stopping everything, and the only time he gave up any rebounds at all was when there was nobody around the net. Mm. If there was anybody around the net, he squashed it. Yeah. Face off. Yeah. Uh, the kid Anthony Bono had four or five golden opportunities. Was robbed two or three times. Marabito had a couple. Uh, you know, uh, Reddy had a couple. Yeah. They 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 played really really well. Uh, they gave up. They scored two goals in six minutes of, at the end of the last six minutes of the first period, mm -hmm. and they uh, wound up getting an empty netter at the end, making it three nothing. But uh, the, the teams in Lynn certainly yeah, uh, showed out season. very very well in the state tournament, yeah. and they're still going strong. Yes, yeah, so for the for this weekend's game between the, the classical girls are playing. Now, this classical girls team, you know, they had the second best record in nineteen and one in, in, in school history. That that two thousand four team, I believe, was like twenty and old. Yes, yeah. So, yeah. What do you think this team? How far do you think this team can go? Because they're really talented. Well, they're, they're they're very good. Tom Sawyer, the coach, does a great job with them. Uh, they breeze through the. You know, the only game they lost was in the Wolverine tournament mm -hmm. to St. Mary's girls. Yeah. Uh, they breezed through the conference and won the conference easily. Uh, that's, I think that's the first time in a while, too, that they outright won the conference. Mm -hmm. uh, but they played well. Parrish Wilkie went over 1,000 points, yep. uh, doing a really good lead up. Friend of the show. But uh, uh, Delgado, uh, Aranias Delgado, was mm -hmm. really filled in when Wilkie was hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, she went down a couple of games, and they, uh, without her, they managed to win games in the conference. And the, the kids, so that gave them a little bit more confidence, yeah. gave the people a little bit, uh, a little more confidence in their playing time. So Wilkie's got a little bit of help now in the tournament. They play Wilmington, who played St. Mary's very, very tough okay. in their uh, in their tournament here. Mm -hmm. uh, St. Mary's only beat them by two, so uh, it, it'll be a tough game against Wilmington. And lastly, before we go, upcoming spring season for track and field, who are some players that we should pay attention to? Track and field, it's not, the number situation is tough mm -hmm. for the Lynn teams. They don't get a lot of, of players. They get, uh, like with the shot put, they got a couple of football players and mm -hmm. maybe f uh, halfbacks track, you know. Baldwin for St. Mary's is, is an outstanding. He's, he's, he's won state championships the last couple of years uh, in, in the uh, decathlon or the biathlon. Or, uh, he's been outstanding. So okay. there's some, a couple of the girls do well. But it's not one of the biggest sports in the city. Baseball and softball, St. Mary's will be good. Classical will be very good coming mm -hmm. back, both baseball and softball. And uh, St. Mary's should be pretty good as well. All right. So I mean, thank you, John. Once again, the time time goes by really quick every time we get together. So I'll be looking forward to it as the playoff, as the state tournament continues. We'll definitely have a recap of it next Friday when you come back. But thank you again for being here once again. Educating us on the on everything, we gotta have like a segment when you we could just let you talk about the MIA and your displeasure for them. So no, you know, you'd have <laughs> we'll, to bleep most of it out. Don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll handle that. <laughs> but thank you but again, John. Happy birthday, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. You guys have been watching Plus One with John Hoffman. Toss it back to Brian. Great job, Mukala, once again, with the legendary John Hoffman. Always great segments. But now we're going to talk to the most surprising story that I think I've ever heard. Surprising? Surprising story. Uh, Shocking. I, um, my, when I heard this, my mouth dropped. Uh, that is a college basketball coach paying money to a player to go to his program. <laughs> Do you guys believe that at home? This wait, this wait, this was a shot. Allegedly. allegedly, allegedly. Make sure allegedly. you use allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Yeah, Sean, because they deny it. Yeah, Sean Miller. He was. They got him on a wiretap talking to an agent about possibly paying one of their play. Allegedly. allegedly, allegedly, allegedly playing DeAndre Ayton. He's like he's a top pick. He's they they're predicting him to be the number one or two pick in the in the June NBA draft. Oh, he's dirty. He can so, play. Yeah, seven he foot two. He got. He can a handle the ball. of like 10 feet. Yeah, he's, he's legit. Yeah, he's a man amongst boys. So the, Worth the money. So the wiretap said he he allegedly discussed $100,000 to pay to Aiton to come play for the University of Arizona. And you know what? Hey, 
I'm all for it. If you want to pay somebody, if you want to pay one of these college athletes, pay them. Yeah, amen. Pay them. Just give them the money because, I mean, they're going to be broke while they're in college anyway, so might as well have son. And $100,000 $100, compared to what the NCAA makes is chump change. Well, so, I mean, just what, what the college is going to make off this one player. They're yeah. going to make a lot more than $100,000 off yeah. having this one player in the program. Yeah, so that that. That was interesting, but I mean, none of this stuff is, you know, surprising to no, a lot of, of people not. because everybody knows this has been happening for years. But you know, uh, Sean Miller, he took a he didn't he didn't coach a game against Oregon because it just uh, I think it believed it happened. The announcement made about his yeah, it was like that earlier. That yeah, day. earlier that day, so he didn't he didn't play. I believe one of his assistant coaches is already in trouble as well with that whole with the whole FBI probe. So mm-hmm. this is. I think the tides is ch- t- I can't even say it. The tides is changing. Is that how they say it? Well, that the works. Tides we is know turning, what you're changing. About. Yeah, you can make up your own words yeah, here if you want. Up. So I think, I believe that these players are starting to are starting to realize they are going to start to realize their powers. But this is this looks like it's going to be the the downfall of the NCAA. Well, what to, to me, what stands out about this story, uh, story is this is ESPN's reporting, and they've actually had to uh, go back and retract some things a few times. Sports Illustrated has their own story on this. Yahoo Sports which as well. D- uh, Yahoo Sports. The, I know the Sports Illustrated one actually backs up what Sean Miller says. What's surprising here is that the University of Arizona is 100% behind Sean Miller. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, calling, they're totally saying that this is bogus, that this is false, that there's no wiretap or, or anything like that. There was never any money talked. They're adamantly denying it. He is going to coach through the rest of the season, mm-hmm. through the tournament, and, you know, I, I think he should. Like I said before, the FBI, you've got something better to do, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there is so many other bigger issues. I don't want I don't want the FBI focusing on this. Like, we got terrorism. You got this yeah. school shooters and things like that. Yeah. Mob. Can you not focus on, on college kids. basketball? Yeah, especially Come kids on. who are already broke. And the right. thing is... The thing is, if you look at these, if you look at these payments, it's just like, okay, so one player received fourteen thousand three hundred thirty three hundred three dollars. Another received fourteen hundred thirty six thousand, ten thousand, two thousand, two thousand, fifteen hundred, seven thousand, nine thousand five hundred, six thousand, seven thousand, one thousand, one thousand one dollars, two thousand. Yeah, and another one, a player's mother received four hundred dollars for a meal. She was taken out for a meal. A few players. It, their their family were taken out to a meal, so they received some money to go out, to go out to dinner with, I believe a cer- certain agent or something. So if you're looking at this, compared to the NCAA, which signed a deal with CBS to broadcast the to broadcast March Madness for 10.8 billion dollar deal, so 10.8 billion dollar deals, and you want to sus- punish these kids for taking. This this chump change is yeah, it's I mean, pretty ridiculous. It's money that they could be making at you know if they want to work at a Starbucks yeah. like as a part time student or something. Mm-hmm. But they can't they can't do that because, because they're putting so much money into their sport. Yeah. you know they, there's uh, students on campus that get paid to work in the library, the registrar's officer, whatever, mm-hmm. and they get paid to do that. Well, these kids don't have that because they're putting in all their time on the court. Yeah. So. Can you at least pay them for that. Yeah. And there's the thing that that's crazy to me is there's boosters from the school that are willing to pay them. There are, yes. The NCAA just needs to change their dumb rule about this amateurism stuff and get these, let these kids make some money. Because we've all been to college. I, I wasn't a scholarship athlete mm-hmm. or nothing, but... Everybody's broke in college, mm-hmm. unless you're unless your family, you know, you're from a well-off family. Unless that you're a Trump or a Kennedy, yeah. yeah, and then they you get into you Harvard money. and UPenn and just because. yeah, they send you money here and there. But a lot of kids in college are broke. Yeah, and some work multiple jobs, but they're still broke. So I mean, the student athletes, they're they're the brokers of the broke because they're traveling all the time playing with their sport when they're on the road and stuff. So they don't their schedule isn't the same as a normal student. So 
I mean, we'll see what goes from here. No, I, I'm totally in agreement. I think that they need to get paid. I think that maybe this will be the catalyst that makes that uh, yep. argument more front and center. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hope agree. Sean Miller is vindicated. I think that Arizona's, Arizona's a good team. Yep. I think this could be motivation for them to make a deep run in the playoffs. They already yep. share a pack, uh, pack share a part champions. of the Pac-12 championship yep. as it stands right now, ranked number 19th. Have, in my opinion, probably the best player in the country yeah. right now. Yeah. Expect this team to use this as a motivation and make a deep run. Uh, yeah, so, hey, I mean, we'll see from here. We got, you know, March Madness is happening in a couple of weeks. Ooh, so we I got, can't wait my favorite, yeah, favorite this, sporting event. This is going to be year. fun. This so, is great. All right, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break, and then we're going to go to Athlete's Corner. This one, this Athlete's Corner, the past two weeks has been, been blown up. It's been the they've ladies' been the best, edition. They've been the best segments. Yeah, it's been the ladies' edition. they got to stop that. outdoing us. Yeah, we need so much we need, better um, on camera than we are. Yeah, the ladies are definitely representing the Lynn. This time I spoke with Mia Nikolakopoulos. She's a soccer player from St. Mary's who signed the visit. Don't ruin it. Hey. You got to wait for the interview. Go ahead and roll it. Yeah. Soccer. It's great. Check out Athletes Corner. My friend James Gandolfini and I got to know a lot of combat vets over the years. And it guts me that 22 of you are taking your own lives every day. Wounded Warrior Project is here to help. You don't have to go it alone. You hear me? You don't have to go it alone. Welcome to our second edition of Athletes Corner. I'm like back to back weeks. We've had the ladies representing. Last week we had Lynn Classical women's basketball team. Now we got a member of St. Mary's women's soccer team who just made a big announcement last week that she signed her letter of intent to play. Soccer at Division One Sacred Heart. We have Mia Nicolakopoulos. <laughs> did I say that correct? Yes, you did. Yes. <laughs> I, I was I was trying not to mess that up. Okay, I like I was repeating it over myself a couple <laughs> times. But how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. You know, can't complain. Welcome to our nice little setup here. Thank you. So how's everything going with you? Good. Good. So you. You made the big announcement last, was it last week or the week before? Um, yeah, la uh, two Thursdays ago. Well, so. Two, two yeah, weeks ago. Almost two weeks ago, uh, yes. Okay, so, you know, how, how's that for you, signing the letter of intent? Um, it's exciting. It was really last minute, so mm -hmm. it's definitely all kind of happened really fast, but yeah. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, now, were there any other offers from other schools? Um, a while back, I had, I was communicating with a few mm -hmm. but then I had my injuries and I kind of just like fell yeah. back well, so this okay. was really like my one option to oh. play okay so Sacred Heart that, no, you told me it's in Connecticut mm -hmm. I thought it was in Philadelphia <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was in Philadelphia but why Sacred Heart um, well when I first went to visit the school it was like really what I was looking for I wanted mm -hmm. a small school with, like a really close-knit community and the buildings were re really nice and mm -hmm. everyone was really welcoming and then I went to an ID clinic that they hosted in April. Mm -hmm. And everyone was just, again, like really welcoming. And the players and the coaches were super nice. And I just like, I liked the coach's style of play. And it just yeah. felt like I could really be there. Did, if, did, did the coach's style of play for them fit the style of play yeah. for you? Yeah, they're really big on um, like the midfield and like passing the ball instead of like dribbling, just possessing the ball, which is kind of how I play rather mm -hmm. than like kick and chase. Okay. So it definitely like fit how I play. All right. So... We'll get back to that then. Mm -hmm. Just talk about this past soccer season for mm -hmm. you. You know, it's your last year at St. Mary's. Just talk about all that for you. Um, it was a little bittersweet. Mm -hmm. I love high school, both like playing and just being a part of high school. Yeah. It was just, aside from club, it was really just relaxing, and I got to have a lot of fun and be with my friends. And it was definitely, I feel more sentimental because I missed my entire junior year. So this was really like my like my year that I really wanted to like work hard and have a great time mm -hmm. and it was fun yeah it's uh, yeah, it's always fun though yeah. no, I didn't I didn't keep up with the soccer records and I what mm -hmm. did you guys finish your record at? um oh. I once I got hurt I kind of oh. like fell off the tracks with uh, that but I mean we did we did okay well, our league is difficult mm -hmm. so you I guys mean have it's a always a battle yeah a sports. it always is a battle yeah yeah so I mean the injury part that's you know, that's part of the game, but mm -hmm. how rough was that for you just not to be out there? Um, I mean, it was junior year when I missed the entire year. It was definitely really tough because mm -hmm. I was named a captain and I was really looking forward to it. 
so I spent the entire year like sidelined. But I'm actually not thankful that I hurt myself, but I am thankful to like had that opportunity because I could really like see how my coaches mm -hmm. like were going through and yeah. how my players were responding. Mm -hmm. So I definitely got like that side of like the captain role. Mm -hmm. But then when I hurt myself again my senior year, it was just it's like such a letdown. Yeah. Now, now how is that? You know, because you miss an entire season. Mm -hmm. And as much as you want to get out there, and then when you come back, you're, you're, you have all this excitement, you got the season going on, and then it happens again. Like, yeah. like, what does that do to you? I mean, I was just, at that point, I just didn't want to play anymore. I was, mm -hmm. like, aggravated. I felt like it was, like, a sign that, like, I should quit. Mm -hmm. So I was really telling myself, like, I don't want to play anymore when I did. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to, like, tell myself to just give it up because yeah. it wasn't worth it. But... And then you did. You didn't give up. Yeah. You you, uh, you got through it. And you, what well, what was the motivation that got you t through that to push um, to, to be like I don't want to give up. Well, I stopped for a little bit, and then I really missed like all my club friends because playing club is like, you know, you really have to work hard, but you also have like that great group of girls on your team. And it was just I always looked forward to club season, and I really missed it. So I started slowly getting back into it, and then once I was there, I was like, wow, I really missed this, and mm -hmm. it was such a huge part of my life always. So I was just really excited to be back, and then this opportunity came, and I really couldn't pass it up. So now you've been playing soccer since you've been like, like three, three, four, yeah. Yeah. The, was that just something your dad got you? Your parents um, got you I, into? Yeah, I think so. My yeah. dad is a huge soccer guy, so mm -hmm. he's always both my, my brother and I did play soccer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, now, all right. So now you know you, you're getting through your senior year, graduation's coming up, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna make that transition to college. To, how are you foreseeing yourself? you know, getting through this, this phase and then transitioning? Um, well, last year I did, last summer I did a summer program with Repertoire Fitness in Danvers, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm going to hopefully do in the summer, because this upcoming. So, I mean, I just really need to, like, work super hard. Yeah. I need to train hard. And, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not going to be easy. It is a yeah. big transition between high school and even club to college. Yeah. It's a lot of fitness and being strong. So that definitely is going to be hard to work through, but... I am excited. Yeah, and you all, you also have to focus. You, you got the athletics part, and then you also have to focus yeah. on in the classroom things. Mm -hmm. So, how just for as a student athlete, how how are you able? How are you going to be able to do that? Taking your experience from high school by doing both. Um, well, even in middle school, I did juggle a lot between like basketball, soccer, running, tennis. I did all of that in middle school and like doing my school work. So I do have like some experience, mm -hmm. but. Um, at the school at Sacred Heart, they have like study groups. You know, everybody always gets their work done. They mm -hmm. have all they all have great GPAs. So yeah. I know there's. I mean, it's manageable, but it is difficult. I just have to make sure that I stay on top of everything. Yeah, definitely. And also speak speak to the nature of you know going Division One. This mm -hmm. is this is the best of the best. This mm -hmm. is a big step for anybody. Just a person coming from Lynn going to a Division One school to play at to play sports. Mm -hmm. Can you can you like speak on that just a little bit? Um. I mean, it's it's really it's kind of like I just I can't believe it in mm -hmm. a way. But I mean, there's all there's so many different levels. There's you know Division three. There's still some amazing teams yeah. out there. Division two, Division one. You know, it's just um, it's really it's all about really working hard. Like I mean, I always in the back of my mind thought I would get here, but there was always something telling me like maybe you should stop. Maybe you need to work harder. Mm -hmm. But my parents, my dad especially, was, I mean, even when I was, like, seven or eight, was, like, if you, like, keep playing how you are and you keep training, like, you'll get to this place. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's hard, especially. It, as exciting as it is, it's nerve-wracking. You know, yeah. that's a huge thing to accomplish for anybody. Mm -hmm. So it definitely is nerve-wracking. But Yeah, and speak on just your whole family and their support for you, because I know, every, you know, everybody knows your dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from the mm -hmm. Rose Beach play. And I know... I know you probably, some, some seeing him working hard, it just gave you mm -hmm. some motivation or just gave you the work, work ethic yeah. to do what you do. Um, well, he's definitely always believed in me and always, I mean, I always thought he was kind of giving me more credit than I deserved. Yeah. But I mean, when your family believes in you like that and they always tell you you can do things, even my family, my coach, like outside of my immediate family, like my uncles, I mean, they've all, they've seen my, seen me play they've seen my games mm -hmm. they, they all told me like I'm a great player so I definitely 
helped me to start believing in myself, like I can do this and I can keep working hard. So they've been really helpful through everything. Yeah. And lastly, how, how big a role did your coach play in you know, your development? Um, I mean, from the second I met him, he, when he saw me play, he knew he really thought I was a great player and he always trusted me. Mm -hmm. He always had questions about what, I should, what we should do with our formation. Like he always came to me. And I mean, that was just, it was really a confidence boost. Like I, I deserve to be here and like he really believes in me. And just all throughout my four years, like with my injuries, mm -hmm. anything, like he's always been there. He's always helped me. He's always gave me confidence. And he's just, he's such a nice guy aside from soccer. Like yeah. he was really super helpful. All right. Well, thank you for being thank here. Thank you for thank having you. me. Thank you. Congratulations thank once you. again. And good luck going forward. Thank you. We'll come back here with a long <laughs> break and stuff with trophies. And we'll, we'll have a little party for you. Something <laughs> thank like that. Thank you. Well, all right, you guys have been watching another edition of Athletes Corner. This, this is like the female edition all the time. We got the ladies representing. So shout out to all the ladies in Lynn who are doing big things. So we're going to toss it back to Brian. All right, and we are back. I just want to start by thanking Ryan, our uh, co-op student. In between the break, he actually got us waters. Uh, we just want to show that you're appreciated here for your water because it is Employee Appreciation Day, and we love to stay hydrated on this set. Thanks for Thank the water, you, water boy. Thank you, water boy. Thank, Thank you, water, water boy. boy Ryan. Appreciate Thank it. <laughs> He's laughing behind there. Bobby Boucher. All right. All right, now we got some boxing to talk about, a fight I'm excited for, finally a heavyweight fight that I'm excited for, and that's Deontay Wilder against Luis Ortiz. What they call him, the Brown Bomber? Brooklyn Bomber. Brooklyn Bronx Bo Bomber. Bronx, Bo Bronx Bomber. Uh, One of those. Yeah. Anyway, he's got a big right hand, and I've been watching him. I'm a big boxing fan. I know. Uh, even though I don't really know his <laughs> nickname. I'm pretty sure it's the Bronx Bomber. I think it's the and Bronx any, Bomber. Anyway, he's, uh, Deontay Wilder has been yeah, knocking a, nobodies out for years. So yeah. that that's Bermain Stavern. He's he's a decent opponent. But I remember watching. like they just picked him up from the street. The Wait, well, and believe it or not, he's one of the better heavyweights. The heavyweight division is very weak right now. Mm -hmm. Boxing needs a strong heavyweight division. Well, you know, back in the 90s when you had Holyfield. Had Lynn Hines. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm talking about heavyweights. You had Holyfield, oh, yeah. uh, Lewis, yeah. Tyson, those guys. You know, the, the, boxing needs a strong heavyweight division. They haven't had it in the past t 10 or so years because the Klitschko's were just so dominant. Mm -hmm. Finally, Vladimir Klitschko has been dethroned. Vitaly was dethroned a few years ago. They're both retired now, both getting into politics or something yeah. and marrying celebrities. <laughs> uh, Hayden Panettiere and Vladimir Klitschko are, are so, You are sound married. a little jealous about that. There's <laughs> some jealousy in your voice, I hear. I, I won't go there, but <laughs> I am a little bit bitter on that one. So, but Deontay Wilder, he's he he's the guy. He's the American next big American mm -hmm. heavyweight. But he's been fighting nobodies for so long. He yeah. he didn't fight anybody good. I think until 2015 when he fought Stavern. He mm -hmm. was in. It was at his 31st fight that he actually fought somebody good. He he built up 31 fights with 31 KOs, knocking guys out first, second. Maybe sometimes the third. Very rarely it went to the fourth. So he was just knocking nobody. Was out. Everybody in boxing was like, what is this guy doing with his career? Where is he going? And he's finally on the big stage yeah. against his biggest test, Ortiz. And Ortiz is a big test. He's a tough guy. Both of these guys are undefeated. So Both of these somebody, guys are somebody's somebody's catch o, that Somebody's O has got to go. Yeah, so this is, I mean... Wilder puts people, he's been putting people to sleep, so. That's what he does, <laughs> but they're the nobodies. But yeah, that's the thing about boxing, like a lot of, a lot of boxers, they are kind of strategic with their matches, they, you know, they'll rack up wins against, you know, people they're way better than, just to make them, you know, so when they do get a big fight, they kind of like, they can build it up, that, that's just my, that, that my view. That is true, but it's, I've, I haven't seen it this bad, and a lot of times they'll, they'll pad it, like I think, uh, Alvarez did that. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a lot of fights that he said he fought in Mexico. Yeah. There's not really in training. But these were like televised ESPN fights and yeah, stuff. There so. were just nobodies. I, I mean, before we go to the, the, the ending, who do you think is going to win this fight? Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to actually say Ortiz. Ortiz. And I'm going to go with the underdog. I think he's, he's a better boxer. He's got a s solid amateur background. 
good chin. Deontay Wilder's chin's never been tested. He's wild with mm -hmm. his punches. He's going to throw uh, an overhand right haymaker. He's going to get countered. Ortiz is going to put him to sleep. I'm just going to go with Wilder just because I saw him put that guy to sleep two times. So I'm going with the guy that puts people to sleep. I think Wilder's going to win. So he's got yes, a he, he's got a chance. He's yeah. the favorite in this fight. Yeah, for so. sure. Lastly, before we end our show, did you yes. see this uh, dirty play by Mr. Zaza? Yeah, I did. It was, uh, are we going to play it? It was, uh, I won't, I'm waiting to see it on that, the screen. It was, was a G-rated version <laughs> of what Gronk did to Tredavious White. That was like the, G, G that rated. was hilarious. He's just big and clumsy. Yeah. And he definitely did it on purpose. If you watch oh, the game, he, he acted like someone pushed him and it was... <laughs> of course he did. It was hilarious. That's what Gronk but, did. I, I, I was, yeah, it was, it was hilarious, but you know, that's that's just him. He has a little history of hurting people. I so. like that. I like when a player's a little nasty. I used to be that NBA. Basketball's, basketball's a little too soft for me. Yeah, that's I mean, when Barkley was playing, Barkley used to do that stuff it. all the time. Yeah, you know what I mean? if you were a guard back in the day and you went to the paint, the all big men had to rule. It. They're gonna make you wish you never came back you down were, here. You so. weren't gonna. If you were gonna score, you were gonna score on your back. Yeah. You know, your back was going to be on the ground. I but, like that grit. I, there's too many fouls now, too many guys getting hurt. Now Kyrie, Russell Westbrook, they're all saying he's a dirty player. Wham, wham, well, that wham, was wham, just wham. like, that was just blatantly he did it, it on is, purpose. But you could have, he could have. But I like that. I like You could be more discreet about your dirtiness, but he was just blatant. No, toughen up basketball. Like a ghost pushed him. But it's fun to watch. It's yeah. a fun clip. Do we have any time left? Yeah, we, we have like a minute left, but I mean, weekend plans? <laughs> uh, we can, no, no, there, there's not much to going on. I'm going to be no. watching the uh, Wilder uh, Ortiz fight. Nice. That's for sure. That's something that, see, th actually, because I, I did want to go back to this. This is something boxing needs. Yeah. Boxing needs Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua is uh, a, a huge in England, overseas, he's a big guy. He's about the only guy that can challenge him. Boxing needs Wilder to win. I still think Ortiz is going to do it. Now I'm getting the wrap-up signal. Yeah. Now you can and take it'll us happen. home. It'll happen in this fall. So. All right. You guys have been watching After the Whistle with me, your host, Mikhail Kabong, along with Brian Dorrington. Check us out. Facebook, Twitter, Lynn Community Television. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Lynn Community Television. And go to our website, www.lintv.org. Come by the studio, 181 Union Street. We're here all week. It's my birthday Sunday, too. Hey, Woo! happy birthday. We're out of here. How old are you going to be?